in today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Check this out, y'all. Look, look at this. Y'all seen this? Do y'all see that? Hold on, let me slow it down for y'all. Check this out. Remember, they said these people will start showing themselves. Do you guys see that? Bro, and that's not a filter neither. Because as soon as she seen this, like she tried to hide her face. Y'all see that? It's literally like Blade, bro. Are you kidding me? Bro, look at her hands. Look at her hands when it comes out the jacket pocket, y'all. Look at, again, she tries to hide her face. They literally are amongst us. Look at Look at that, huh? Bro, when they said we were going to start seeing these people, I didn't think it was going to be this quick. But look at that, y'all. It looks like Baraka from uh, Mortal Kombat. She literally looks like Baraka from Mortal Kombat. And she's tall, too, bro. She's lanky. So what do you guys make what's going on here? Again, he ran into her when he was on her way home, trying to ask her what kind of music she listened to and... He was met with this surprise, and she was surprised as well, y'all. Look at this, y'all. It's crazy. I told y'all, our life is a movie. The movie they live is now starting to show itself, y'all. The movie they live, right? The people with the eyes to see are going to see clearly now who really are these people. Age of Aquarius is going to show you some things you really aren't ready for, y'all. But let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting times. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift. Peace out. I mean, let's be fair. That was probably just a normal person. And why was that guy approaching that lady to ask them what music they listened to while they were recording? That kind of is weird, you know? Now, I'm not going to lie. The hands of this individual were really, like, pointy looking. They probably had really long nails. But other than that, this is probably just a regular person walking down the street and people are just making fun of them because of how they look. Also, does anyone notice that the commentator that's commentating this is, like, sweating profusely? wonder why. But yeah, that was probably just a standard person walking down the street wondering why someone was recording them. Here's 11 signs that you could be claircognizant. And claircognizant is one of the four major psychic abilities that we use. So alongside clairaudience, clairvoyance, and clairsentience. Now, if you get a message from an account that looks like this, it is not me, please report it. And I'm really curious to see who gets number 11 because I expect you all to get number 11. Number one, you get a gut instinct about things. You just feel things. You've got that sixth sense. You kind of know things that are coming up. Number two, you are a human lie detector. You easily can spot dishonesty. You can easily spot when somebody's telling you fibs. You can feel it. Number three, you'll get random ideas. And you'll also get the solutions to problems. And it's normally to help other people, to prevent like a negative outcome. Number four, if you're clear cognizant, you will often interrupt people because you know what they're going to say and you know the answers to the question before the question comes up. Number five, you know the outcome to a situation. You see how things are going to go and you know exactly what's going to happen. Number six, you wake up with solutions to problems. You just wake up and actually you might get woken up in the middle of the night as well with the answers of the solutions to things that are problematic for you or your loved ones. You sense energy. You sense other people's energy. You're like a human antenna. You can feel the energy of a room, feel the energy, you know, a lot of objects, places and people. Number eight, you will spend a lot of time thinking and contemplating things and looking for meaning in things, you know, there'll be a deeper meaning to life. Number nine, you enjoy learning. You prefer self-learning, but you're always learning about new things and delving into new subjects. Number 10, you will be very creative. A lot of poets and writers, authors tend to be claircognizant. So you will tend to be very creative. You know, and, and other aspects as well, like run about the house, you'll like things just to, to look nice and you put those little finishing touches on things. Now, number 11, I bet you all are this, yeah? You are that friend. You're that friend that everybody goes to for advice because you give the best advice. Now, you don't know where the advice comes from, but you just seem to know it and everybody values your opinion. Is that you? 
How many at the 11 do you have? And if this resonates with you, leave me a little love heart. I mean, I don't think I'm psychic by all means, but I do have a couple of these traits. One, and it kind of irritates me, is when someone's talking to me and they have a question, I automatically know what the question is and I automatically respond to it. It's almost like a, a, a reaction. I can't even control. When someone's talking to me and I already know what they're going to say, it just blurts out of my mouth and I just answer the question that they're going to ask because... I don't know. It's just how my brain works. And it irritates me because it's kind of rude in a way. It's like someone's talking to me, but I already know what they're about to say. And I'll answer that response before they even say it. And it's just like, in my mind, this is like extremely rude. And I, I hate that part. But it's something that I almost can't help because it just involuntary just spews out of me. It's another reason why I like making YouTube videos, because I can just spew out all I want, really. And there's not anyone that I'm interrupting necessarily because there's no video playing. It's just me talking. It's one of the reasons why I like doing YouTube videos. And I normally can definitely spot a liar. If not spot them, I definitely question people that are liars a lot more because I know something's not quite right. How about any of you guys? Do any of you guys have any of these 11 signs? Let me know in the comments because this is pretty cool. I don't know if it ne necessarily makes you psychic. But it probably means that you have a good, healthy mind, maybe. Let me know in the comments what you think. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day. And to the people that are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being subscribed. And to the people that are not subscribed to the channel, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK, where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories, or theories in general, Leave a comment starting with questions for DK so that I can find them in the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. Right, this is part two on the Assyrian, the crazy mysterious site in ancient Egypt that is not open to the public and nobody knows really when it was built or by who. If you haven't seen part one, I suggest go back and looking at that because there's lots of cool stuff about the water, how deep the five story complex goes. Uh, but this is more about why it is contested how old this thing is and potentially could be really old because we don't know anyway let's let's recap so this is the Assyrian site complex as taken from gra current ground level so this is if you're standing at the back of the temple of Osiris which is a middle kingdom temple complex beautiful temple the current ground level looking down into the Assyrian this is the top of a five-story, 15-meter complex full of water that they cannot pump out because it is being constantly filled up by an ancient aquifer. So this is the Temple of Osiris, which is the Middle Kingdom temple. It is beautiful. Look at this. It is at current ground level. The pillars are made of beautiful, small little chunks of limestone, I believe. And the entire complex is carved with the most colourful, ornate Egyptian. This is a stunning temple. It is nothing like the temple out the back underground. Nothing architecturally links these two temples together. So it is difficult to see how they could have been made by the same people. What's also interesting is the shape of the Temple of Osiris is nothing like any other temple site in Egypt. All the other temples are it tend to be in a straight line or like a kind of rectangle shape. The Temple of Osiris is in an L shape. I'll show you from above. Wow. This is the Middle Kingdom temple as seen from above. And you can see that instead of continuing straight as following the form of all other ancient Egyptian temples, it suddenly veers and creates this L shape and after the temple not connected to the temple there is distinctly not connected in any way the Assyrian and the temple of Seti or Seti's temple also you can see that they're not even aligned so if you were going to design a two temple complex system why not align them because you you really could it would just shuffle it a little bit you can see that it is on the wonk so it is contested which temple came first here is another view from kind of bird's eye. You can see the, the Middle Kingdom temple and then the Assyrian behind. Now, this is apparently the area that's highlighted is the area that you would need, the space you would need in order to dig the 15 meter five story complex that is the Assyrian. So if you were going to build the Assyrian after the fact from the temple that is above, 
you would need this amount of space in which to do it. So according to the scientists who were like working out this archaeology, um, you it's impossible that the Assyrian was built after the fact from the Middle Kingdom temple. It had to have been there first because physically you it, they're too close together yet not connected to be able to be do you see what I mean? What am I trying to say? <laughs> do you see what I mean? Basically, you need that much space to build the first one. So, therefore, according to that, this has to be. That was a very long way of saying that. You get what I mean. So there is a theory that Seti, when he was building his Middle Kingdom temple, were, they were laying the foundations and setting it all up. And then they hit, they were digging down and they hit the top of the old Assyrian temple and then they had to rearrange the design of their temple and make it kind of fit in this shape. There are arguments saying that this shape is uh, obscure for a purpose and that there's like esoteric meaning behind it. So it's up to you which you prefer. But it is possible that they had to redesign the one above ground because of the one below. Now at the front end of the Assyrian complex, you can go through a doorway and into a hall which has a granite vaulted ceiling very similar to the ceilings that we find in Giza. So over here, we have an image from the second pyramid uh, in the Giza plateau. And here we have the vaulted ceiling from the chamber of the Osirian. They both contain 30 degree triangle vaulted ceilings. Now, why this is weird is because according to the mainstream timeline, these pyramids were built thousands of years before the potential timeline of the Osirian. So at least we're looking at an old kingdom build for the Assyrian, according to the lookalike architecture. However, of course, the pyramids are contested for being however old. So if the pyramids get pushed back a thousand, a couple thousand years, therefore potentially so does the Assyrian. And just to really show you the difference of architectural style between the temple above ground and below, here we have huge megalithic precision cut 70 ton pillars and there are a lot of them no inscriptions no hieroglyphs that are original to the assyrian it it's not giving the same designer you know what i mean again this is me i'm a nearly six foot in those shoes that this is how huge uh this <laughs> temple site is sorry i'm so excited now, there is one other site in Egypt that looks very similar to the style of the Assyrian, and that is the Valley Temple, which is the temple in front of the Sphinx. Now, we know that the Sphinx is contested date-wise because we have records of the Sphinx being repaired in the 4th Dynasty, which, if why are you repairing something that you apparently just built? So there's some questionable questions to be asked there. But also look at the style. There is zero hieroglyphs. The wall pattern on the side is very similar. The fact that it's like shaped with the pillars, you can see what I see. So I would say there's a really good argument that the Assyrian is at least Old Kingdom. At least. And we can contest even that. So what do you think? How old do you think the Assyrian is based on the style? Let me know. Ancient Egypt is really famous for building up like the pyramids, but actually what I think is even cooler is the fact that they built down. You have huge 100 foot, 125 foot shafts and and sort of complexes underneath the Giza plateau. And clearly at the Assyrian, we have a 15 meter five story complex that's underneath. So I would bet all of my money that there are probably literal cities and structures underneath the sand and way out into the Sahara Desert that we have just, we just know nothing about. And I, for one, petition that we scan it all. Like they're scanning the Amazon. We need to scan the Sahara Desert because we're going to find stuff underneath, 100%. Mark my words. I agree. Ever since I learned about LiDAR and being able to scan the surface of the earth to be able to ping down into it to see if there's any structures or anything left behind, we need to do that to the whole world in my opinion. There's probably so many lost civilizations that just have been buried over time that we're just walking on top of right now and we have not a single clue and we have the technology to do LiDAR so we really need to start pinging the ground just to see what's under there and there's probably some really crazy stuff 
when you go into the ancient Sumerian tablets, you discover that there were beings living on Mars called the EGG in these ancient tablets. They were the working class Anunnaki people, and they were up there creating a breakaway civilization. But the atmosphere was very harsh as it is today. And so they were complaining to their rulers who were on Earth, Enki and Lil and Anu, that the conditions up there were kind of harsh and they don't mind it, but they would just like to have a break. And they also said, and by the way, we would love to have some women too. They didn't have any women, supposedly. They wanted some women and they wanted to take a rest. And so they weren't given a break. And so in the epic of Atrahasis, they decided to go to war against the kings of Earth. These are the sons of God. These, and Anu was called the God figure and his sons would be these Ajiji beings, the sons of God that fell to Earth and went against, rebelled against God. They came down from Mars to Earth. They encircled the campus at South Af in South Africa called um, Adam's Calendar. And the, the whole thing is scripted out in this tablet, how they were about to go to war, literally, and fight. And then Enki says, I have an idea. There's an existing hominid on this planet. We can add our essence to it and get it to bear your load. So an agreement was made and the war was thwarted that one time. But it, And eventually they did go to war. However, these beings... We're traveling back and forth from Earth to Mars. I actually got messaged by someone. They said, can you please explain what's happening at my house? Because it's freaking me out. And they sent a video from their ring doorbell. At night, you see from the ring doorbell, the whole neighborhood, there's a green laser goes, Ooh. Yeah, I Ooh. What? It was, like, yeah, it was scanning. Like, it was like a jet or an airplane that flies over. And but, it was in Cape Coral, Florida. <gasps> this, pl this plane, they did it for like a week straight. It would fly over Cape Coral at night, scanning it with a green laser, the whole Cape Maybe Coral. Maybe they're updating Google Earth. Lockheed Martin. Martin has the capability. They've been, or they have been scanning the earth for who knows how long of like, so they're mapping out the entire earth, every neighborhood, every house, everything. Green laser penetrates water, but they can get a full scan of anything under like wells. Surface. So any pipes. surface. Tell us what you're doing. Well, they, that happened in Hawaii like a year or so ago. Someone got it on video of them scanning, said, oh, we're doing it to climate control or climate change and all that stuff. It's like, what? What the heck? What the heck are you talking about? All these about? resources oh, just go ahead and make, stop making things out of plastic what if there's like bases like think about like what the death star is in star wars well dang now that kind of makes me change my mind about lidaring because that might be what that is they're probably scanning the grounds and penetrating it to see what's in it uh i could be wrong but now i'm like maybe we shouldn't lidar the earth because that's kind of weird and creepy when you think about it and people are just standing there getting scanned and who knows if there's anything in that laser beam there could be certain radioactive like elements that are probably giving us cancer or something, you know? So maybe no lidaring. I, I, I might take that back. For those of you living on the East Coast of the United States, like myself, this is important that you hear. It's important that you go click and watch the video, uh, read the article and everything else that I'm about to tell you. Listen, there is an anomaly that is swimming or moving up alongside Africa and it's expected to possibly breach East Coast waters. Now, I don't know what it is. It's huge as fuck. It's a cluster of waves over 80 fucking feet high, spanning 2,000 miles. This is all real. This isn't conspiracy. This isn't bullshit. This isn't fake news. This is factual shit. Please, if you live on the East Coast, click the link in my profile, go to the articles tab and read it for yourself, or go on Google or your favorite search engine and type in anomaly in ocean in Africa. Stay safe, stay blessed, and stay lit, people. The following video is a 911 call from a homeless woman who lives in the middle of the woods in San Antonio, Texas. She calls in to report that she literally saw an unidentified massive creature that was hairy and smelly, and it literally devoured a deer carcass not 75 feet away from her. Did she witness an actual sighting of a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch? Take a look and listen to what she has to say. I have to say that it's probably one of the more credible 911 calls that I've come across. Tell me what you think. I'm on duty police, fire, or EMS. I'm not really sure, ma'am. Um, I just watched the biggest 
sure if this video is real of this 911 call. I'm not even sure if the 911 call is real to be honest. But this sounds pretty authentic and the video clip is very disturbing, but the video clip is not as disturbing as the phone call. Honestly, I don't believe that this is the true video clip to that phone call. I mean, if I seen a figure out there standing with extremely red eyes and I just witnessed them devour a deer, I would either think that it's a Bigfoot or a bear, and I would not be able to stand there and film it and record it anymore because I'd either have to get to safety. Like, what what do you do in that situation? Because if you're homeless, you don't have a car, you don't have a ride, you don't have no way of protection. Like, you're just out in the middle of the woods. What do you do? You run up a tree, you just grab a stick and just defend yourself, or just walk away and act as if you've never seen anything. Never seen this. And just slowly walk that way and hope that it doesn't come for you next. I would be pretty scared in this situation. How about any of you? How would you handle it in this situation? Not as in your current situation as a homeless person that has nothing but a bedroll. Do you think the ancient civilizations were using hydrogen technology? I believe so a thousand percent. The Great Pyramid itself has what I call a hydrogen chamber. It was built on top of an aquifer, an ancient aquifer. The Great Pyramid used to take some of that water for, to create physiostatic electricity, but some of it was forced into the cleans chamber, which operates like an electrolysis machine, extracting hydrogen from oxygen. And where did that go? The shafts. Those shafts are specifically aligned with star systems. Orion, Aldebaran, Sirius. Those shafts are aligned with stars for a reason because they shoot hydrogen towards those star systems. Why? Because we found out in science and astrophysics that you can actually encode data on top of hydrogen because it's the most abundant element that exists in the universe. Astrophysicists are utilizing the hydrogen frequency to try to communicate because you can encode data on it to send it out into deep space. Same thing I think the Great Pyramid did. In ancient times, it was set up to transmit back to those star systems an update as to what's going on down here on this breakaway civilization. Necronomicon, often described as being bound in human skin and inked in blood, is a legendary tome of arcane knowledge, encompassing magic, spells, curses, and rituals. Its existence is shrouded in mystery, with rumors suggesting it is kept hidden in the secretive archives of the Vatican, accessible to only a select few. The lore surrounding the book claims that there exists only a single copy, making it an object of intense fascination and speculation. This book, while steeped in myth and often dismissed as fictional, has been linked to a series of alarming occurrences. Individuals reputed to have read its pages reportedly suffered from sudden unexplained deaths or fell ill under mysterious circumstances, suggesting a curse upon those who dare to uncover its secrets. This pattern of misfortune has spared only the book's alleged author, adding to its ominous reputation. The tales of the Necronomicon's lethal impact on its readers provoke questions about the nature of the spells and rituals contained within its pages. 
Liquid Death is now a $1.4 billion company and it's just water in a can. Fortune spoke to CEO Mike Cesario about some of the company's secrets on how it became so valuable. Cesario was working in public advertising when he was asked to help with a project about the health hazards of sugary drinks. That's when he came up with the idea of canned water, but the client rejected it. Cesario was unable to put his idea of water in a can aside, and in 2017, he trademarked Liquid Death using the name and branding as intentional dumbness. Liquid Death is a funny brand. We don't actually take ourselves seriously. Like we don't think we're extreme. We're kind of making fun of all that extreme marketing. Cesario knew that extreme branding would be marketing in itself. He explains that because of the branding, a user would take a photo of it. Then post it on social for free to all of their followers to spread the awareness of liquid death without us having to pay for the awareness. Cesario also wanted liquid death cans to fit in with a party environment and look just as appealing as walking around with a beer. He doesn't think there are many healthy brands marketing in the same fun sort of use as liquid death, which is why the company has seen such great success. I've personally never tried liquid death. I'm not against trying it, but it's just really unappealing to me. And I get it. It's a great marketing scheme. The design of it and everything looks extremely cool. I, I understand 100% where they're coming from with that one because that was a really smart move. If you wanted to create a product that people are going to take pictures of, carry around with them, it's a really good talking piece, to be honest. And I've seen some people drinking it in my area, which I find extremely surprising because it's really expensive. For like a six pack of that, it's like 10 bucks. And that's kind of ridiculous to me. I'll just get water out of my well, thank you very much. How about any of you? Any of you try this liquid death? I mean, I am. there's nothing against it for me. Uh, it's just not for me, you know? All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.